Hello and welcome to Art in Bloom in Concord, a collaboration of the Garden Club of Concord, the Concord Museum, and Concord Art. Here at the museum, six amazing designers have interpreted watercolors by Lauren Coleman that are now on view in the museum as part of an exhibition entitled Home, the Paintings of Lauren Coleman. In this video, you will hear remarks from our uh, curatorial associate, Erica Lohm, who will talk about each of the paintings, followed by conversation with our designers, who will share with you their inspiration, their vision, and their choice of plant materials to produce their fabulous arrangements. I hope you'll enjoy this celebration of art and flowers that is Art in Bloom in Concord. Hello, my name is Eric Colomb and I'm the Curatorial Associate at the Concord Museum. And I'm here in our Wallace Kane Galleries where we currently have an exhibition of paintings by Lauren Wilkins Coleman, a Concord-based artist who uh, painted scenes of New England. And uh, we have several beautiful paintings that we're going to talk about today uh, in conjunction with Art and Bloom. And there's no better place to start, I think, than Home, uh, a painting that Lauren Coleman started in 1982 and finished in 2003. If you need to know anything about Lauren Coleman, it's that he drove around Massachusetts and New England looking for old, uh, dilapidated barns. He was really attracted to what he called the, uh, the ruins of, of Massachusetts. And uh, in 1982, uh, he was in his car and went to Sterling, Massachusetts and encountered what he said was the most handsome New England farm he had ever seen. And at the time, it looked very different than it did today. It had several Several buildings and he stopped the car and he took out his sketchbook and immediately made some drawings uh, of what you see here. He never finished the painting, uh, well, he, he didn't finish the painting until 2003 when he returned to the site and found to his dismay that all but one of the buildings uh, had been destroyed. And so the painting that he made in his studio years later was really a composite of all of these sketches he had made and the farm that still existed in his imagination. And that sort of really sets the tone for this exhibition. A lot of the paintings here show uh, a, a scene of New England that uh, is no longer with us. And that's what makes it really compelling, I think. And what also makes it compelling are all these little details in the painting that you can only really appreciate up close. Details like the little uh, flecks of snow that are falling from the sky that he's captured against the side of these buildings. And each individual plank of wood rendered with such detail. This is all done in watercolor here and everything is so fully realized, full of color and texture. And that's what uh, a lot of these paintings in the show uh, will also contain, this a lot of individual detail that really rewards close looking. Hi, uh, my name is Judy Blakey Lane, and I'm happy to be part of this wonderful experience of doing Art and Bloom for the Concord Museum. And I was assigned this lovely painting by Lorraine Coleman, and it's a wonderful painting and when you look at it it's just a kind of a cold winter New England day and with a lot of snow but when you look at this painting I got really drawn into it and realized how much warmth there is in the painting um, you look at the the warmth of the beautiful home back here there's lights in this part of the barn, there's lights in this part of the barn, and then there's a lovely reddish coloring of the barn. And you can see there's a lot of activity in the barn. It just wants to draw you there, and the painting is called Home, and I can see why. So when I was trying to do the reflection in my flower arrangements, I was trying to figure out how to do this. So I found that the painting is really very structural, and there's three parts of the painting. There's the big barn, there's the warm house, and the snow. So instead of deciding to do one arrangement, I decided to do three arrangements. <laughs> so as all three components of the painting. And then I found these birch containers, which also reflect the woodiness of the barn and the house 
and the whiteness of the snow. So I divided it into three parts, and then my first part was to do the snow, which was the, the upfront part. So I did just did one container of just straight snow, and, and it's baby's breath. Then I decided in the second part, which is the barn, I decided to make it a really warm coloring. And I found these wonderful calla lilies, which I really felt reflected the warmth of the barn. And the angle of the barn and the house are very strong to me as I look at it. So I created a very slopiness of the flower arrangement. And then I have this protea here, which reflects sort of this part of the barn. And another protea right here reflects this little jutting part of the barn. And then I actually, there's a little yellow in here of the yellow freesias, which reflects the little yellow coming from the warm lights of the painting. So that's the second part. The third part is the house. So I just really tried to create the warmth of the butternut color of the house and make it just pretty simple as that. And I found these wonderful pincushion protea, then with the tulips and the freesias up here are more the softness and the lightness of the roof. And back here we have a little pine and green for the trees back there and a little more pine here for the, the front tree. It's very subtle. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to connect the three arrangements into one. So I took this little piece of pine, which is sort of like the rock wall. And so I have it coming towards the snow. And then I have this silvery leaf, eucalyptus, coming out, which is sort of the silvery of the buildings here. And that is about it, except when you look at this painting, you wonder if it's really snowing or not snowing. It's one of those days, is it the end of the snow? And you look at the yellow uh, house and there's really no snow, but if you look at the barn, it looks like there's a little snow. So it added these little white touches of, to sort of reflect a little snow still coming down for the day. And that's what I did. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. This painting is called The Four Winds Are the Ringmaster. Lauren Coleman had a penchant for finding unusual perspectives and compositions. Here you can see he's looking up at a cupola from an old barn. The, the cupola is boarded up uh, and yet the weather vane at the top, it looks pretty spectacular actually, the sort of, uh, again, classic New England motif. And he's captured this a uh, piece of architecture up against this beautiful blue winter sky, the only sky uh, who, that you can really find this time of year. And that blue color you see throughout this exhibition, it's a color that he returns to. Uh, and this is all the more dramatic because of that, uh, the detail, the level of detail in rendering this lone object in the foreground. Again, this rewards close looking. Each individual plank of wood is, is marked and it's dirty and it's tattered. Uh, but again, there's something beautiful in the whole thing put together and more beautiful for this sort of unusual uh, perspective that you're asked to participate in looking up uh, from below. And you can kind of almost envision Lauren Coleman uh, standing where I'm standing uh, with his sketchbook making those drawings which he would later complete in his studio. And this is really uh, one of those paintings that uh, makes you think about Lauren Coleman as an artist who is always looking for something unusual uh, and something beautiful in the everyday. Good morning, my name is Erica Rodriguez. I'm part of the Concord Garden Club. Um, I was asked to make a painting with this fabulous um, Coleman painting. And um, I loved it immediately. I, I loved the, the orange color. I loved everything about it. So um, I was thinking and set out to the flower market to go and buy flowers. 
And um, this caught my eye immediately. It was even before I went. I said, this has to be an amaryllis. It, it's the color, it's the, it, it's the presence, the same presence as the painting. And I needed a weather vane. Um, I either was gonna make one or buy one. I knew a friend had one, um, so I went to get it. And with a lot of trying to see how I was gonna fiddle that in there, I got it on there. Um, so the container that I uh, found, I knew it had to be wood, since there's so much wood here. This is all wood. So I was very happy with the container that I found. It's sort of in the same color, the same stripes come out. I just love that he has all these straight lines here. If you look close, you see they're precise uh, stripes, which you don't see further away, but it sort of gives that feeling. So the blue, there was only one choice. It had to be delphinium. Then um, the white in the painting is, is really prominent white. So I was very happy with the ranunculus that I uh, found. All that little white that comes out, kind of comes back in these little bowls, the donkey ears, as I call them. This is actually rosemary. It's a gray rosemary. And the wood is very grayish. Um, I love the mahogany um, magnolia leaves. The magnolia leaves, I use the back of them more than the front because the back is, has that rusty brown feeling that you see here, that mix. Um, and then I found some raspberries. It's really green. There's not much green in the picture, but it just made it more natural and outside. Um, I'm happy the way it came out. Um, these, these bowls, I don't know what they are, but I just love the dark color. And since that dark comes out here, I, I wanted them there. Um, that's about all I can say about the arrangements. I had a lot of fun doing it. I loved the painting and um, yeah, hope people like it. This painting is called New England Classic, and it was done in 1985. Uh, Lauren Coleman described the subject of this painting as a quintessential New England home, and it's also a quintessential Lauren Coleman painting. I mean, the subject matter of an old farm and home in New England, uh, covered in snow, trees bare, these are all hallmarks of Lauren Coleman's style. And what you can see in this uh, painting here is uh, a home, a little dog here, but no people. And that's not how it was when he actually painted this. When he was making studies of this home, the owner of the house, Helen Gay and her daughter, would come outside to watch Lauren Coleman paint. He'd come back every day to take another sketch. And uh, he knew these people. And yet the final product uh, is almost haunting in its loneliness. There's no uh, sign of human life here. And in fact, he even took this dog from another farm and put it in because maybe it was a little too lonely without anyone in there. Uh, but this is sort of uh, par for the course for Lauren Coleman. These are all sites of, uh, these are all paintings of, of sites that have been sort of left uh, to time and uh, show an absence of human presence here. And that's sort of the melancholic feeling that arises when you look at these paintings. Although we know just by, uh, reading Lauren Coleman's autobiography that he knew a lot of the people whose homes he's painted. When I think of Lauren Coleman, I think of wood. I think of New England barns with forlorn, sad looking uh, abandonment. However, what I loved about this particular painting is that the wood here is warm and it has a glow to it. It's not a coincidence that it's one of the rare paintings that Loring Coleman put something alive in the painting. We can see here the dog that's guarding the barn. Uh, in choosing flowers, I, um, I wanted to have 
something that would show, again, the siding of the barn. And the Australian blackwood, I thought, conveyed very much the slats and the siding. Um, in choosing the warmth of the wood, I thought the calla, calla lilies had a very subtle orangey glow, but not too strong, something that would show a little of the wear in the wood, but yet showed something that was alive. The snow is, um, is spring snow. It's not, um, it's melting, it's showing life underneath. So I didn't want to have uh, anything that was stark white. I wanted to have something that had um, a little bit of flex in it, and I thought the Alstromeria had a wonderful um, uh, muted kind of um, white that, um, that would do well here. Um, I um, chose the um, Australian, um, no, excuse me, the, the Mag Southern Magnolia, to uh, again convey the tips of the barn roofs. Um, and of course, the uh, willow uh, sticks, uh, branches that would again uh, show the, the trees, that, the bare trees. Uh, in choosing um, the container, I um, was trying to figure out whether a dark container that would show the road, the asphalt road, or again stay with the wood um, that I loved in his paintings, and I decided to cover a glass container with wood. Uh, um, however, when I finished, I realized that it was a little too literal, and so I decided to uh, glue little containers on the side and carry the snow uh, across the, the, the wood that would um, uh, lighten that up a bit. And again, I have the um, uh, thistle that if you look very carefully, you can see an almost a bluish tinge to the snow and in the shadows. And, and I thought just a hint of that would, would convey that. Um, but again, I love this painting because it's so warm and so, um, so alive. This barn is not finished. It has still some life in it. This painting is called Blue Door, and it was done by Lauren Coleman in 2004. When Lauren Coleman and his wife Tinka were in Norway on a cruise, he spotted this door and it immediately captured his attention. He was struck by its unusual color, the peeling wood and paint. It just sort of stood out to him and he had to draw it. And so he took uh, sketches and then some detailed photographs and later completed the painting in his studio. And the end result is this sort of strikingly uh, mundane composition with such beautiful color. And the attention paid to this sort of humble and simple door really is what Lauren Coleman's artistic view was about, is taking these mundane subjects and giving them attention and making them beautiful. And you can now see kind of what Lauren Coleman saw while he was in Norway. You're struck by the very same things he was struck by. And the painting itself, you know, just looking straight at this door, it gives you so much to pay attention to. It really does reward close looking. And uh, the, that blue color really resonates. It's the same color as many of the skies in his paintings. And that's a really neat parallel to think about. Hello, my name's Pam Nelson, and I'm thrilled to participate in the Concord Museum's Art and Bloom 
and I love the Lauren Coleman exhibit and all of his artwork. And I was really inspired by the blue door, the colors and the story behind it. He was on a trip to Norway uh, on a cruise. They stopped in Bergen and he and his wife took a long walk uphill and he, they took a, a break and sat on the side of the road and he spotted, looked up and spotted this fabulous blue door and he had to bring it home to paint it. So he took a sketchbook and drew the door and then he went up close with his camera to get close-ups of the color so that he could bring them home. So I just was really drawn to this painting. Um, I started with the base here. I chose a gray sort of cement silvery color to match the base and I thought some of the lines, even the handles, looked like um, maybe handles on a door. And then I used all different shades of blues and grays to try to capture the feeling of the blue on the door. Uh, so I used um, blue delphinium in several different shades, the um, dark blue anemone, the blue privet, uh, and the silver foliage eucalyptus. And I think that's it. And then I chose the the browns to match the surrounding border of the door. So I used like a rust color eucalyptus, uh, dried brown eucalyptus, and then these roses and the orchids sort of tied it together. And the orchids got the shades of burgundy and brown that the, the door frame had as well. And the roses are called amnesia. And I thought they had the browns and sort of, there's a little purple undertone and even the gray and the curtains above the door frame. And then I finally I used these carnations to try to capture the wrinkling and crinkling of the paint that you can see in such detail. It's hard to believe it's a watercolor. Um, and finally the white um, ranunculus and anemone with the blue center to match the, the door frame. And then I put this here because I thought it was like the key to the door. And I highlighted it. So that's it. Thank you. Lauren Coleman is known for making large-scale dramatic compositions of everyday life in New England. This is an example of one of his smaller works, but it's no less impressive. Uh, watercolor was a medium that needed quick response. It dried fast, and so you needed to be precise and you needed to be intentional. And that's what you can see in this painting. Uh, this is of two Dodge trucks from a local farm. He knew the farmers. and. Coleman was really drawn to these sort of old broken down trucks in the middle of the yard that were slowly sinking into the mud. And that sort of gradual decay was a, a theme that you see a lot in his paintings. And here I think it's, it's most fully realized, uh, this passing of time and passing of something kind of quintessentially American, right? These Dodge trucks and similarly these New England barns uh, that are sort of sinking into time and will soon disappear. And that's what you can see with this beautiful uh, painting here, lots of bright and vibrant colors. It's sort of a moody overcast day, uh, but there's just a lot of uh, interesting beauty to behold, even in the decay and even in the ruin. Hi, I'm Jeannie Hamilton, and I had the pleasure of getting to make a floral arrangement that is a interpretation of this beautiful Loring Coleman painting called the Dodge Brothers. Um, what I loved about the painting when I saw it is the bright color of the trucks and how those are juxtaposed against this really um, rugged and you know just a little bit of a wintry landscape that feels like it's kind of transitioning into spring with the mossy greens but the trucks are just this unexpected pop of color since they're they're just sitting there in this field almost decaying as they're sinking down into the grass and things are growing up around them so um, with my interpretation I kind of took my inspiration from that 
and decided that I wanted to have the arrangement look um, pretty, pretty much true to nature. The backgrounds would be in browns and natural greens and some different shades that kind of mimic what's going on in the background of the painting and then let the trucks themselves be the pop of color and be the thing that really jumps out of the arrangement. So for the background, I used just sticks to kind of create those trees, um, pompous grass to create these plumes that represent the background, some dry gypsophilia, some um, gunny eucalyptus, just to create this kind of shrubbery feeling in the background. And then for the bottom part of the understory underneath these trees, because there's this mossy, lovely kind of hopeful spring color, I decided to use dianthus and tuck them down in to create this mossy floor to the woods. And then there's these little pops of color with these eucalyptus pods that I've tucked in, kind of meandering back to, to give you or this evoke that, um, that lovely little kind of rustic wall of stones that, that's going back through the woods there. And then for the rest of the understory, I've used um, hydrangea. There's some antique hydrangea that gives it a little bit more texture. And uh, the container itself is, it's actually um, terraced wood boxes. And then I've put moss on the outside sort of sporadically on different places to kind of give this feeling of the landscape in the front, letting some of the brown pop through, but then giving this sort of rustic aged feeling. And then I've got amaranthus cascading over the sides again to just give it this a little bit of movement and a feeling of um, just age and then for the for the the colorful element I just decided to have a little bit of fun with it and have these pops of color come out in these trucks and the trucks I decided to do um, topiary style and so they're actually carved little tight shapes and for the pops of color I've got some Gerando daisies and then Kensington roses which have this really beautiful detailed texture that looks almost like the cross section of a grapefruit or a wagon wheel and so it has this feeling that feels very farm-like to me. Um, and then for fun I have Dutch dried Dutch bulb or little um, pods and I drilled little holes in them and I tucked in hypericum berries to create the feeling or the look of the tires and then also the same hypericum berries are tucked into the scabiosa in the front and in the in the front of the other flowers here the the, the color on this side is a um a pink clooney ranunculus to create headlights so that just adds a little bit of whimsy um, for the beds of the trucks i've got sticks that i wrapped in just some floral wire with some tape over it to create this feeling of the bed of the truck. You know, beds of trucks sometimes have those bands. I wanted to create that. And then the back of the truck has horsetail cut to create that, that feeling of the bed. There's some leucodendron cut to create the texture in the background of the, the bed. And on this side, I actually used the stems of the leucodendron after they were stripped and cut them to size and created a bed for this truck. And again, these little tires out of these Dutch pods. And then for another little extra pop of color and something sort of different and unexpected, this is actually a mini white allium that is tucked in to create sort of the reflection of the window in the truck. And then to finish it off, I have Helleborus kind of popping here and there just to give it a little bit more movement and create that understory feeling of this woodland scene, something that you see sort of in the spring popping up. Um, and I think it just comes together to, to give a, a sense of whimsy, but also this bright color popping out of this really lovely, peaceful landscape. Um, and it was a really a lot of fun to make, so I hope you enjoy it. This painting is called Spectral Barn. Lauren Coleman made it in 1995. It's a watercolor. 
And this is one of those paintings that really uh, encapsulates the process of making a watercolor in, uh, in situ. Uh, Lauren Coleman was out here uh, making his detailed sketches and preliminary watercolors when a light drizzle began and the mist came in gradually over time. And in his autobiography, Coleman discusses how this mist created this sort of spooky haunted effect. It made the sky white. It, it plays with shadow and light. And he was able to capture that sort of dramatic change in weather and light and tone in this painting. And the final, uh, the final product shows uh, this barn being almost enveloped completely in mist, except for the stark uh, black color of the tree in the foreground here and the opening to the shed uh, to the right. And that sort of light and dark contrast is really something you see in a lot of Coleman's paintings. And it's a really striking example in this one in particular. Well, I'm really excited to show you this Lauren Coleman painting uh, and the fun I had doing the arrangement to go along with it. This is a painting that I first saw in December. My husband and I came over to the gallery and um, this one just really spoke to me. Uh, we always play this game, um, what's your favorite? And we guess each other's and guess why. And um, so uh, this was definitely the one that um, spoke to me and uh, Tim guessed that. And there are a lot of reasons why, and I wonder if you'll feel the same way. I mean, all his paintings, of course, are just so beautiful and technically remarkable. Um, but this one just felt like it, I felt more of an emotional pull to it and uh, a tension in it. Um, uh, I mean, there is all that beauty, um, but there's also a dis-ease in it. I think it's, um, there's a lot of contrast that the black, black of the tree, the white all around that. Um, so uh, there's that, there's, there's an unusual perspective. Um, it's very, very low, a worm's eye view, we used to call it in art school. Um, just this, um, you just really are looking up at the tree and the barn. It gives them such a feeling of majesty that I feel runs through some of his other paintings too. Um, uh, really a stately look. And, um, but also like things are off. You're not really used to seeing things from that perspective. Um, of course, this is also a magical moment. I mean, when you look at it and really think about what is going on there. I mean, there's all that fog. That is what allows the barn to dissolve that way. I mean, there's some, dis-ease in that too, what really is back there. It's so mysterious. Um, but I thought, you know, so what is making that fog? Uh, and I think what we're looking at here is a first snow of the year. And the ground, the fog it comes from a warm ground or warm water and cold air. Uh, you have all those leaves on the ground, no snow or ice anywhere. So I think you are also getting the feeling that magic that I think most all of us feel when we see the world turning from um, you know, green and orange to totally white. I mean, that's that, I don't know about you, but I always kind of gasp, even if I see those first flakes out the window. Um, so to me, you can see a lot of power, a lot of things that grabbed me here and that wonderful thing with a painting that can just keep providing a story, things to think about, things to wonder about. Um, so stepping over here, I'll show you um, what I did to interpret this work of art and, and bring out some of the things I was wondering and thinking about. Um, so first, I mean, when I start on an Art and Bloom piece, I'm always thinking about the vessel. I mean, that's the hardest thing to find. And, um, so I knew I wanted to do something large. I mean, this is not a huge painting. I think um, in real life, it's just a little bit larger than that. But again, I feel like it's the majesty. You know, you just stand there and it's, it feels like it's quite big because of that perspective, even if it's not. So I was looking for something large. I found something even a little bit larger than, um, than I was thinking of at first. But uh, 
Um, I also, I, I picked it because I really felt like, okay, this color is going to take care of all of these leaves. There are a lot of leaves, a lot, and a lot of this tawny, rusty orange color through the painting along with the black and white. So this takes care of a lot of that. Um, you know, I knew it was going to be a big arrangement. Um, I think sort of the classic proportion um, is the arrangement is one and a half times the height of the vase. So I already knew I was going to be doing something large. And uh, in fact, seeing the way the branches go out of the painting, I knew I wanted to expand beyond that classic one and a half and maybe keep the flower portion within that. Um, so what else? I knew I was going to have to find and figure out a way to do a lot of white and black. Um, and there's certainly a lot of choices in white flowers, not so much in black. Um, so for all that snowy white, I was thinking, hmm, is this going to be one of those big fluffy hydrangea? Um, and I thought, well, you know, those are great. That's a way to get a lot of white. But really, um, we're talking about, in watercolor, the absence of white. I mean, anywhere there is, um, there's white, there may be a light wash on it, but really what you're seeing is the paper. So I thought, mm, those just seem too dense and also a little hard to work with. Hydrangea, the hydra part means water. So they need tons of water and in a museum environment, that's really risky. It's usually a dry place and they can flop pretty easily. So no to the hydrangea. And um, then I actually got, so I ended up with Liatris, um, which I like because it sort of relates to the season of the other flowers I was picking. That's a, that's a way to keep things a little more harmonious. Um, so, that's, so that was the choice for the white. Um, also, you know, there's, there's all this snow. I mean, there's this amazing thing that Coleman did so brave where, um, he painted this whole painting, and then there is a spatter of white to make that feeling of the snow coming down. I mean, that is, you do this technically amazing thing, and then you flick your brush at it. So, you know, to get that, or a feeling of that, I mean, I was thinking maybe baby's breath, but then with the branchiness, and um, I saw these pussy willow with these little dots of off-white on them, and I thought, well, that, that'll be my way to get the snow. And um, then, of course, I was crossing my fingers that um, the flower exchange would have what I was looking for, which are these, these are also pussy willow. They are a type that's um, this sort of twisted pussy willow. Um, and there they were. So that certainly made me happy. I knew I could get the height I was looking for. I knew I could get, you know, the that sort of twisting feeling of the branches. And there is something to me that sort of ghostly, maybe even a little sinister, the way these twist up. And um, I was looking for something like that, a little tension between beauty and maybe even a little ugliness. Um, so I think that can enliven a flower arrangement just the way it does in a painting. Um, so some little details, like you can see, I pulled the liatris to the front right here because there's more white showing here. I push them to the back behind the pussy willow there because there's less back there. Um, I think when I saw that stone wall, um, you know, at first glance it looks gray, but in flower arranging as in painting, you're always like looking in, okay, is that really gray or is there some color I can work with in there? So, I mean, I saw green. And, um, and then I thought, wow, all those, what is, what can I work with? I thought, wow, those stones really look to me like this um, silver dollar eucalyptus. Um, the privet berry in here, well, again, I was looking for something. What is blackish? But as I look at the black, what's the color I can see in it? And especially on the tree, when I looked at that, I saw a little purpliness. Um, and so I decided to find something that was like a purpley black. There's also even a little lavender back there, those trees in the background. So there's a purpliness in the painting that I wanted to pick up here. But also I think maybe something Coleman's doing the painting was also what I was looking for here, which was um, a complementary color. 
something that would be right across the color wheel from these yellows and oranges, especially the yellows, and that is purple. So that strengthens the arrangement, reflects, I think, something that Coleman may have been thinking of also in the painting, um, and highlights that. So the little ranunculus, I didn't point out, but I just love these touches. There are little windows that are just lit up so brightly, and it makes this great contrast to the snow, the sort of barren, snowy look outside. So um, I don't know. I, I pumped those a little bit more than in the painting. I'm just looking for that warmth right now. So, um, uh, but I, I love that aspect and wanted to pick that up here. And then um, I wasn't planning on getting roses. I really was counting on the vase to pick up the leaf color. And then I saw those roses and they're so unusual with this green center. And um, I just was feeling rose so, um, and wanting something like that in, to work with. So um, I got these. And when I looked back at it, I did see maybe there's actually a little bit of this more tawny pink color in the painting. And they actually are helping that way, besides these little tufts of grass that you can see in there. But, oh, let me tell you how I structured it, because I think people do sometimes wonder, you know, how do you make all these flowers stand up? And how, and how do you work with a container that has a little more open mouth um, and even get flowers to be as tall as this? Um, so the way, the structure I have in here is at the very bottom, I have a flower frog. That has, it's like a little pin cushion almost with, um, pin sticking up, and it also is made of lead. It gives some weight to this, which just gives me a more secure feeling. So these big sticks are driven right down into those pins. So right away, I can have them standing up, and that's how I start. I create just this overall structure of the sticks. Then I have a big ball of chicken wire. So the sticks are really secure. They go down through the chicken wire into the pins. And the other flowers rest within the chicken wire. So it gives them a little bit of room for movement, but, um, but they could be pretty much where I want them. And, um, and then at the very top, and this is something not a lot of people do, and I think it's a great trick for home arrangements. I use tape. I mean, in this case, I use flower tape, floral tape. But I, at home, I just use scotch tape in the kitchen and make really this like a tic-tac-toe kind of you know, two strips going one way, two strips going the other way, around the edge of the vase, press it down, and nobody will see it, even on a glass vase. And then it gives you these smaller holes to work with, and it's, it's a great trick for working at home. It lets you use a vase with a wider mouth, but then you have these smaller pockets to stick your flowers in. Um, so I think that is that for the structure. I'll just tell you a little bit about color placement. I mean, I'd like to group the same type of flower so the eye can really understand and take that in easily, like these ranunculus are grouped here. But then have another, an echo of it somewhere else, often on the diagonal, and that's like down there. And you can see I did the same things with the roses. There are four roses here, but then another rose up here too. Um, and what I also like to do is show all aspects of the flowers. I mean, I just love flowers. So I want to show off all of their beauty. So um, I think it's really nice to not just all have all the flowers facing front, but show what one looks like in profile too. And um, it seems to bring a little life to arrangements. Well, I'm so glad that you've been able to share this with me. It's, um, it's really fun for me to talk about it all again. I've enjoyed this process so much. I mean, making this arrangement, of course, but. Um, really mainly that it got me to, allowed me to live with and look more deeply at this Lauren Coleman painting, Spectral Barn, um, that just moved me from the moment I saw it and continued to do so over these weeks. So it's really been a pleasure and I'm so happy to share it with you.
Thank you for joining me for this celebration of art and flowers. I hope you'll come join us soon at the Concord Museum. <laughs>